Hello, good morning to you all, brethren, in the kingdom of God. Let's pray. We thank and bless you for this day, Lord. We give you all praise and glory and honor. We worship you for your goodness. We acknowledge you in our lives, Lord. As we share your word on the screen, I pray your people will be blessed, will be delivered, will be healed, will be empowered to pray. And that their prayer will be heard in heaven. So that, Lord, that the result that they wanted to see or experience will come to pass, even from today. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, I'm here to share God's word with you, and I believe you are ready to receive God's word. And when you receive God's word, you are receiving God himself, because Jesus Christ said that he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father, except through him, that John 14, verse 6. And I know that you are ready to receive God's word. That will bring illumination, elucidate, throw more light, understanding, and bringing faith and peace of God in, into your heart. Amen. I want to share a very powerful word with you. I know you are ready to receive it, okay? So that is the purpose of prayer. We all know prayer, but the purpose. The reason we pray to God is not always because of our need. The main purpose of praying to God always is to have fellowship with God. God the Father Almighty used to come down to the Garden of Eden to communicate with Adam and Eve. That was a fellowship. So God is the one who was coming because he created human being for his own pleasure. That is the word we have to know. The reason human being exists is all because God created us for his own pleasure. Number two, created us so that he can have fellowship with us. And number three, he established us here so that we can fulfill his assignments for our lives. Whatever that God has deposited inside of us as believers of God, then we are able to execute it. Time I pointed in Jesus' mighty name. So prayer is important. Prayer is not always your need, what you are looking for, and then for so if prayer is for our need, when we pray, pray, and God answers our prayer, we we'll no longer pray again because we think now I have everything. So what what could prompt me to pray? Because what led me to pray was my need, not even God. So if God was able to answer all my prayers, then I have to relax and just wait. When the time comes, I am in need, in need of God again concerning my need. Or when I want to speak to God again concerning my need, then I pray again. That is not prayer. Prayer is communication with God. And prayer is to fellowship with God every day. You see that you communicate with Him through prayer and you fellowship with Him through prayer. And fellowship goes with like, after prayer, you worship him, you praise him, you adore him, and you tell him all the things he has been doing for you. And that is how it goes. And God will keep coming, he will keep coming to you, and you'll be having dreams and visions at the right time about God himself, because that is the fellowship, interaction, and communication you are having with him. You remember the Bible says in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, it says we should pray without ceasing. So, which means prayer is every day, prayer is every time. It's not just within a, a very short time and then we are done. It's every day, it's, it's day to day activity. We have to make up our mind to pray for grace so that we'll be praying every now and then. And the purpose of prayer, meaning, is to, to communicate with God, to fellowship with God. And the next one is we pray so that we increase our anointing. We pray so that God will take the stale oil away and put in a new fresh oil, which is a new oil upon our life, like the fresh oil upon us. We pray daily so that our prayer will prevent the demonic activities from coming to us or our family or our home. We pray to God every day so that we destroy the work of the devil all the time. We pray and we pray always because so that we can also destroy the, the setup, the setup or the plot the enemy has really designed against you. Maybe somebody wanted to knock your gate but had been sent by the devil, just a simple human being, but had been sent by the devil to be used of the devil to worry you. So prayer will prevent them that even if they try, the prayer is like a, a very strong uh, uh, vapor that boils in your home, that boils in your life, that boils even from your eyes or your mouth, or boils all over you. So when they try you without you being aware in spirit, uh, you, the presence of prayer, which is the anointing, prevent these demons from uh, uh, attacking you. Even though they may try, you may feel and have a dream, they, but they can never touch you. And most importantly, God is also living in your heart. Uh, 1 John 4, 4, it's a greater is he that is in you than he 
see that is an award. It's the year of God. The little children and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is an award. So greater one lives in me and the enemy will never do me anything. But the next thing is to pray daily. And we pray so that God will bless us and answer our prayer. Because the day you pray, God answer your prayer. But some prayers, it takes days, months, and years before God may bring them to pass or into manifestation. So we need to pray to communicate with him so that God could do that one for us. We also pray to intercede for the brethren so that the, the, the enemy doesn't take them out of the hand of God or from the will of God, for example, in quote, from the will of God into darkness because some of the believers are not too strong. Christ said in his days, he told the disciples, he said, Peter, I pray for you so that when you grow, your faith does not fail so that when you grow, you take care of the little lambs. So prayer, he prayed for the disciples so that the enemy could not take them out of the will of God. Jesus had been a prayerful man when he was on earth. Even right now, the Bible says, he sits in heaven praying and interceding for us. Jesus had been praying to God for us, all of us here on earth, because he's the high priest. Mm -hmm. Bible says, uh, in the order of what, uh, Meki Zedek, he had been praying for us as everlasting high priest, praying for us every now and then, hallelujah. He's a high priest, and his high priest is, is a higher than physical high priest, because he's the eternal one in Jesus. So he's, he's a high priest over you and I every now and then, and he intercedes daily on behalf of us to God the Father Almighty. So why don't you also begin to pray? And why don't you make prayer a norm? And you wake up and pray, and you'll be speaking in tongues, or if you don't know how to speak in tongues, you'll be praying and praying. You divide your prayer into maybe the four parts for one hour. So the first 50 minutes is to ask God to forgive you your sins, pay adventure, you have sinned against God, your neighbor, anybody. And then you pray and ask God to forgive your wife, your husband, your children, your loved ones, and that, that is 50 minutes. The next 50 minutes is what? Is to pray deeply, intercede for yourself and for those around you, the loved one, you pray deeply. And the third 50 minutes is to intercede for any other need that somebody is going through, a Christian, maybe a pastor is going through, men and women are going through around the world, within the nation or in your church, around the world, ever, and that you also spend time interceding mightily for them. And the last 50 minutes is worship. Then it becomes one hour. You begin to worship the Lord and then you are done, and then you continue all over, all over again. So one hour becomes like a peanut. So you need to divide your prayer, and when you are praying, you need to look at the clock, because prayer doesn't know time. Prayer doesn't have any limits. So you need to set time that I'm praying for 30 minutes, and in the evening, in the morning, in the evening, I'll continue for another 30 minutes, it becomes one hour because you, you are going to work. You need to schedule and plan very well, and then it becomes a norm, then the anointing will be compounded in you, and great things will begin to happen at the right time, and your prayer will begin to open more doors for you from the super into the natural. So prayer is so important. It prevents demons. It destroys the work of the devil every now and then. The devil is not afraid of a Christian reading Bible. The devil is afraid of a Christian who is a praying man or woman who have been praying every now and then. He's afraid of him or her. Because even though we reach to acquire knowledge from the word of the Lord, but many Christians have, they have a lot of knowledge about Jesus, about anointing or prayer or faith or grace or favor or healing or miracles or financial or whatever. But they are not really putting it to practice because after you have acquired the knowledge, the next action is to pray with the knowledge you have so that you begin to see amazing results in your life. Hallelujah to Jesus. Prayer should be your laughter and prayer also heals. Apart from all that I've said, the next is that prayer also heals. If you pray deeply in spirit, it heals you, it delivers you, it transforms you, it brings you into another realm. It keeps taking you from realm to realm, realm to realm, realm to realm until you get another super realm that you become like an eagle in spirit. Eagle, you cannot see eagle in this environment. They are far on apogee, I mean mountain top. And that's so you need to mount up. You need to blow the mountain in your home or in your life that wherever you may go, you may, I mean, time may meet you to pray. You go and hide somewhere and pray either at home or anywhere or school blog and you'll be praying. Prayer is the key that brings heaven into the earth. Prayer can bring heaven to the earth instantly and angels will be coming. And prayer also 
produces more angels in our lives. Prayer produces more angels in our lives. And then you begin to have ecstasy, eschatology. You begin to have uh, uh, revelation, rima, and visions and dreams about God through these angels. God begin to speak to you because you have been a prayerful man every now and then or prayerful man every now and then. So you need to set time that you wake up at maybe four o'clock or five to pray one hour and and then in the afternoon another one hour and in the evening another one hour or more than that all depends on your work schedule as we spend time going to work you must also spend time in the presence of god not only when you you are at church and when you are seeking the face of god in church but also at home every now and then so the the personal prayer is very effective than even the mass one uh, personal prayer is you who is facing the wall and you are praying and you are seeking the face of the Lord. So personal prayer is so important. So mass prayer is important, but personal prayer helps you to develop instantly in the realms of the spirit. I mean, in your spirit about the anointing, about the grace of God. God comes to even to fortify you and brother. Uh, remember King Hezekiah, the Lord told him uh, to the prophet Amos, son of Amos. And the Bible says, after he has received the prophecy that he was to die, he faced the war and prayed and made some translations. And God changes mind and then prophet came back he said the Lord said he has given you 15 years to live and then he kept living for another 15 years why because he prayed so prayer prevents death prayer destroys the work of the enemy so if you are not praying and you are you are you are just there and believing God believing is good but believing goes with praying seeking the face of God and sometimes you wanted to fast with it and then God will begin to move not one day you do it and it becomes a norm so let go into God's when I believe you will learn better better things and many many keys that you need to learn from this amplifier how Jesus was at the garden of that many and then he was about to die and he didn't want to die and he said father should have mercy on him he should suspend the car from coming to him because it was a bitter cup that he was about to drink and it was no easy at all because they would spit on his face you'll be naked you go through so much that in fact he knew what was coming because he rather even opened his mouth and said he was going to die. Let's hear God's word and I believe you will learn some key words here and that will benefit you in your work with God. Hallelujah. I'm reading Luke 22, 39 to 46, I'm profile, and it's about the garden of that many. Okay. And he came out and went, as was his habit, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place called Gethsemane, he said to them, Pray continually that you may not fall into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup of divine wrath from me, yet not my will, but always yours be done. Now an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony, deeply distressed and anguished, almost to the point of death, he prayed more intently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation again why are you sleeping my dear brother and sister why are you sleeping get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation one more time my dear brother and sister who's who's watching me this morning why are you sleeping get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation that says god's word this morning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now so i have the, the sub topic i want to give to you this morning create a mount which means establish a mountain in your home in your house build an altar altar of faith it's not necessary of physical altar or maybe a table or something, but there's a place you need down in your room and to pray. Like I went to a boss house some time ago. He showed me where he needs to pray. I went and entered his bed, his room and everything, nice house where he was lodging. And he showed me that this is a place he needs down to face the wall and be praying. It's a, that the man is a, a praying man. The secret of a boy is God. The secret of a boy's successes and everything, blessings, whatever, is prayer all the time. We also pray to support him every now and then because he is a good man. Amen. Create a mount. Number one, seek the Lord 
daily. Seek the Lord daily. And the seeking is not only of your need, but many things associated. Seek the Lord daily. And number two, allow God to lead you to pray often. It's not even a prayer time, but you will have a burning sensation to go and have them pray for actually maybe 20 minutes or more. Or the time is reaching, but because you are watching a movie or watching maybe a special documentation on TV, uh, the time is about 10 minutes to pray. And it's instead of you to, to skip watching the TV and go and pray, you watch. And when you watch, you are suspending the prayer and the enemy could take advantage within that, that vacuum and then many things could happen because it's something you are building up to get to the topmost stop. You are building up. Prayer builds you up. Prayer takes you in spirit. And when we pray, because you don't see what happens in spirit, you don't know what you could do when you are not praying because the effect is great. The, the what they call it, the benefit that you can get from prayer, praying to God is so great. It refreshes, it renews, it empowers, and it blesses. Hallelujah. So number two, allow God to lead you to pray often. God, allow him. Sometimes like me in the house, let uh, about maybe 10 minutes or 20 minutes to pray. And I didn't know because I haven't looked at the time. And then I begin to have some, some bubbling, some sensation in my spirit. And I look at the time and I knew it's a sign. It has been happening to me every now and then because it is not by mind nor by power. I've done this for over 25 years, praying, 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 always praying. Three times a day or more, praying. Praying for sometimes six hours, sometimes the whole day, more than six hours, 12 hours. And I'll be praying. The last one is three hours, three hours a day. I did by them and I'll be praying every now and then and it has done a lot of things for me because it's taking me into another super super realms hallelujah to Jesus number three your prayer brings you close to God I'm talking about the purpose of prayer and the subtopic is create a mount create a mount create a garden of that many create a praise a praise that is like a, a, I mean solitary praise have an intimate relationship with the master with God the Father Almighty in Jesus mighty name and number three prayer brings you close to God Sometimes because you have a, a program and the program, if you focus and because anything that you think about, sometimes it magnifies. If you think about a program, it will magnify. But if you think about God and make it to him every day, the program becomes less and God becomes huge because God is higher than anything called huge. Hallelujah. Prayer brings you close to God. And then whatever you are passing through, going through becomes a minute. You are not moved by what you see or hear because God is in you and with you because you have seen the power of God. Hallelujah. Number four, if you don't pray, you would fall into temptation as Christ told them in the garden of Gethsemane that if they don't pray, they'll fall. Anything that comes that way, they will also follow up and it, it will go against them. Prayer prevents you from doing the wrong thing. Prayer direct, prayer protect, prayer strengthens. Hallelujah to Jesus. So if you don't pray, you would fall into temptation. Any, anything, whatever that comes your way, you may fall into it and, and then your life is gone or you are disgraced or you are jailed or anything could happen because you need to be prayerful because there are a lot of temptations on earth everywhere by women, by men, by women who are naked bodies, naked bodies with the underwear fully here and there on Facebook and YouTube and everywhere. Temptation of people who will try and say, oh, I will, I will sponsor your ministry. But meanwhile, the person is Satan's deputy minister just to sponsor you to bring you down. You need to be sensitive in the spirit and being prayerful so that you move by the will power of God and say no. You must let your yes be yes and no no so that you remain holy and anointed on the Jesus until the kingdom comes. Hallelujah. Number five, prayer releases God's angels to attend to you like Jesus did. After praying, praying for three hours later, angel came to minister to him. They came to strengthen him, to continue moving, to go and die. So prayer will strengthen you to accomplish your vision, your dream, ministerial dream, or marital dream, or family dream, or any occupation, whatever, or educational dream and anything. Prayer helps you to reach your goal, to reach your potential and capacity and ability of God's glory and grace upon your life to get to the stream. Hallelujah. Prayer releases God's angels to attend to you. Number six, through prayer, angels are release to minister to us without, without we being aware i've seen angels and i do see them and i've seen jesus and i do see jesus and because he's always in my eyes he's always standing in my eyes in, in my spirit 
Hallelujah to Jesus. It's wonderful. It's rare. I love him so much. And that's what I have. The most important person I have is Jesus. Christ announcement. I pray for my children. Jesus is number one in my life. I pray for my family. So to prayer, angels are released to minister to us. And lastly, number seven, why are you always sleeping? My dear brother and sister, this morning, I'm answering your question on the screen. Why are you always sleeping? As Jesus told his disciples in the garden, he told them and said, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation. Temptations may come anyway but if you are really not stimulated or strengthened or rooted in god and god's world the enemy can pull you down he can use phd to pull you down hallelujah to jesus it is time to be strengthened in prayer keep praying keep praying yourself and all shall be well with you may the lord be with you may the lord bless you for this time uh, taking heed to god's word and giving a uh, part of your time to listen to god's word and i believe that you are going to go into a lengthy way to breathe and breathe forth and when you are broken through you will still keep praying and seeking the face of the lord i came to encourage you this very morning many believers around the world may god bless you for your precious time and i, I love you all and i thank you very much amen We trust you have been blessed by today's prophetic Bible study. We encourage you to take Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. So, kindly pray with me. O oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Word of God says in Acts 2 verse 21, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. I receive everlasting life or eternal life into my spirit. And according to the word of God, which says in Romans 10 verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, shall be saved. I declare that I am saved. I am born again, I am a child of God, and I now have Jesus Christ dwelling in me. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In 1 John 4 verse 4. Now from today, I walk in the consciousness of my new life in Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Congratulations. You are now an official child of God.